see. Okay, so welcome to Town of Brookfield. Uh, select board meeting for June 29th, 2023. Please rise to say the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I'm sorry? Okay. Great. Thanks. All right. So, um, first order of business is the warrants that were signed. Can we get a report on those? Uh, make a motion to approve the warrants. FY 2324 AP $79,446.57. FY 2324 payroll $193,277.53. FY 2324 withholding $88,879.33. FY 2325 uh, accounts payable $126,798.48. FY 2325 payroll $199,666.75. FY 2325 withholding $32,000. 568 and 87 cents. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, can I get a motion to take the business out of order? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we uh, take the business out of order, specifically that we um, take up uh, item agen agenda item 13, fiscal year 24 appointments, as the first order of business. You have a second? Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so let's uh, go through the appointments. All right, that's the first order of business for the um, 350th uh, anniversary committee. The, all of those uh, expire on the 30th of June. Can I get a motion to extend those appointments um, through uh, July 30th of this year? You have that motion. Uh, can you yeah, oh, second? I, 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 I don't can, know. What are the rules? Yeah, I guess I, I'll second it. If I'm on I that committee. He's on the committee. You can second it. You just can't vote on it. Okay. okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Coughlin, I. Reagan, I. And you're, and you're an and abstain. I'm abstain. Okay. All right, so that's extended. Uh, so then we've got the following um, appointments for, uh, in essence, 2020 fiscal year 2024. We've got um, to agricultural committee. Um, we have Barbara Hamberlin, Steve Novak, and Shelby Hill uh, for ag committee alternates which is a one year. We've got Donald Haberlin and Mark Ledoux. For Animal Inspector, a three year appointment for Stephen Novak. For Beach Committee, we have Alan Jones, Caitlin Servant, Michelle Mandela, Jeff Clark, and Michelle Clark. For Building Inspector, a three year appointment for Jeff Taylor. Capital Improvement Planning Committee, we've got a three year uh, appointment for me and nobody else right now. So if we've got any volunteers, let us know. Um, Central Mass, the Regional Pr Planning Commission. Uh, what was the one that you're appointing? Uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Uh, for uh, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, we've got Kevin Urkula as the alternate. Uh, we've got CDBG Advisory Committee, Bruce Clark, Ryan Point Brand, uh, Bill Simpson, and myself. Uh, for Conservation Commission, we've got Megan Max, uh, Michael Max, <coughs> Scott Chiquette, Carrie Chiquette, David Pratt, and Chris Kelleher. Uh, for Cultural Council, we have uh, William J. Simpson, Gene Lintel. Lytle. Lytle, sorry. I thought her She's only till the end of the year. She's, She's extension. She's in time. Right, yep, hers is only through the end of 2023. Uh, for everyone else, it's a three-year. 
We've got Sean Adams. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the emergency medical squad. So those are the only two for cultural council that are renewing this year. Emergency medical squad, three-year appointment for Sean Adams, uh, Mark Lovely, David Martell, Daniel Esser, Ashley Marks, Matthew Roderick, Terry Anderson, Luke Quattrocelli, uh, Matthew Graves, Donna LaFleur, Peter Martell, Ashley Ledger, Kyla Laporte, and Jeffrey White. For Harbor Master, we have Nicholas Thomo. Okay, that doesn't need to be done. That is oh, that's a lifetime right. appointment. That's a lifetime appointment. For some reason, we have it as a one year. So we'll omit that. Uh, Historical Commission is Carol Plum. Uh, Insurance Advisory Committee, we have Barbara Clancy, Linda Lincoln, uh, Sergeant Sean Marino, Holly Ch Chisholm, and Dennis Clark. For Local Public Access Committee, we've got Sharon Mahoney. Uh, Planning Board uh, Alternate, um, Lisa Matondi. Overseers Board of Dispatch, Michael Blanchard. Uh, Park and Clerk Hearing Officer, Michael Seary. Police Department Chief, uh, Michael Blanchard. Police Patrol Officers full-time. We've got Sergeant Marino, Lee Murphy, Matthew LaPiori, Justin Default, Angela Rodriguez, or Angelia Rodriguez, and Egbert Panero. Recreation Committee, Christopher Droshen, Lisa Hanrahan, uh, Brendan Cunningham, and Timothy Nye. Registrars, uh, Board of Registrars, uh, we've got Carol Plum. Town Hall Improvement Committee, we've got William R. Simpson and Donald Taft. Tree Warden, we have Dennis Tucker. And Zoning Board of Appeals, we have Timothy Simon and Maureen Mariano. Uh, and then for town council, uh, KP Law. Can I get a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Beth, abstain from the ones you're appointing yourself to. Uh, I'm going to abstain from Capital Improvement Planning Committee and um, CDBG Committee, uh, but uh, aye for the balance. So. You'll have to sign all those, Brad. You get to sign them all. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> all right, so like the next order of business is reorganization of the board. So do we have a motion for chair? Uh, let's make a motion. Motion. make a motion for Tom to be the chair. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a motion for uh, Brad to be the vice chair. <laughs> Oh, second. I can't second it anymore. Oh. <laughs> all right. Second. Second. All right. All in favor for Brad to be vice chair? Aye. 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 Beth is clerk. Oh. So I make a motion for Beth to be clerk. <laughs> second. Well, I can't second myself, so. Oh, okay. Then I will second it. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 That's a, that's a wrap. All right. Rest of the meeting's yours, sir. All right, thank Have you very gavel. much, and thank you, and thank you for your leadership <laughs> until now. All right, next item on the agenda is town boards, committees, and employee code of conduct. Kelly? We have a copy of that. It's sent to you. We each have a copy. Um, should be fairly close to the top. We have a code of conduct for residents, we have a code of conduct for employees, and this is for elected and appointed boards, chairs, and committees. Mm -hmm. There it is. All right, for the... Okay. Can I get a uh, motion and a... Uh, can we get this on the table for discussion? Okay, can I, I'll make a motion that we approve the code of conduct for elected, appointed uh, board and committee members. Second. All right, thank you. Uh, any discussion from the other members of the board? 
I don't no. have any. Just I read it ahead of time. Yeah, no, it looked pretty straightforward to me. Yep. Um, I mean, for the benefit of the audience, um, do not cause disturbances or disruptions. Show respect. Use common courtesy. Uh, do not speak disrespectfully. No uh, bullying or threatening behavior prohibited. Uh, do not engage in lewd or offensive, offensive behavior. Um, violence is prohibited. Smoking, drinking, or appearing to be under the influence is prohibited. And shouting or raised voices directly directed at any employee is strictly prohibited and reason for removal. Um, and I think in my mind these are uh, generally reasonable guidelines for, the, uh, for everyone in the town. We expect that of our employees. We expect that of our visitors. And we should expect that of the uh, people working with the town. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing as none, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All right, that is passed. All right, next item on the agenda is the appointment to the Cemetery Paving Committee. Okay, Another. So well, that is the right order. Yep. I'm sorry, it's out of order. Go on. I don't know. All right. That would be Mr. Yep. Kelleher. The board voted that he represents conservation on that. Okay. So I believe the uh, the the uh, prospective members are Mike Siri, Patrick O'Day, Ronald Couture. Don Fagno, Ryan Point Brand, Kermit Eaton, Peter Masuzo, and uh, Chris Kelleher. Um, could I get a uh, motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All right, thank you. Any discussion or concerns? All right, nope. and uh, uh, Kelly, is the is the charter of this committee was that determined by town meeting, and therefore we don't we just have to appoint members. We don't have to give them a charter and assignment. That's correct. All right, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't appointing people without particular direction. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Those members are appointed. And Kelly, I noticed that we, uh, we've got Brad still as clerk here, so we'll have to figure out if the paperwork is... Uh, here, I'll just sign it, uh, and I'll just single line. Okay. And correct the name. All right. That's that fine. works. All right, uh, Kelly, uh, next on the agenda, resident complaint policy. That is attached to the code of conduct? Yes, it is. And it's a resident board member complaint policy. Mm -hmm. It's also previously mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, could I could I get a uh, could I get a motion to uh, give a to motion adopt to this? approve the uh, resident uh, board member complaint policy? Second. All right. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Um, the only discussion I have is: Do we want to allow electronic submission? Like fundamentally, that we consider um, it being sent by e via email, as long as it meets the other requirements that it's signed, that they that they indicate their name, that it's dated, and that it has their contact so information. So, if at some point this, this contemplates that, if it is actually something viable that can be managed, um, it, it can't go to each and each different department. Because okay. then there's no oversight. It has right, to be right, right. one clearinghouse. Okay. And if we can find an electronic way to do that, which actually Brad and I have been discussing, there may be something that we can embed in the website and, yes. and yeah, get a form. to work. Like a form. Yeah. Okay. And or uh, other means, then this allows that if we can accomplish it in the future. Okay, perfect. So, next we can vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just the uh, the ask uh, for this is that the uh, complaints or concerns um, be made in writing, signed, dated, and with contact information, um, which I, I think is reasonable. If there's if there's a complaint, we, we just ask that we know who's making the complaint so that when we after we investigate, the, if we necessary, we can follow up and ask for more information and take care of that. And I think anonymous complaints are probably not appropriate. All right, any more discussion? 
All right, seeing as there's none, all in favor of the uh, complaint policy, please say aye. 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 All right, item number five, tree removal on 20 Lake Road. This um, came to me as a complaint from Mr. Holcraft because trees were reported as being removed on a historic road, a registered historic road. Um, and I asked the tree warden to investigate and he was here to address that. All right. Dennis, would you uh, come up and uh, let us know what you found? So I, re I received a, a call about someone taking down town trees, and I, I went and investigated. And initially, when I took on this position, I went to Ryan, is it Point Brand? Pompeo. Yeah. And uh, he, he gave me some information from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Office of Transportation Planning, which outlines the roads and towns and the right of way widths and the surface widths. Using that information, I went to 20 Lake Road and I initially determined that the tree was on town property. I later received a call from Mr. Chafee wanting to discuss that, and I went and met with him. He used to be the highway superintendent. He informed me that that text which I got the right away with out of has some inconsistencies and I now agree with them that it does have inconsistencies because I've found several myself. The road widths along the roads vary in, in, in width down the in individual road. It changes from time to time. So having realized that, he, he informed me that his property deed defined the front boundary as along the stone wall, which made complete sense to me because in New England, stone walls often define boundaries. So using that information, I then randomly, well, let me back up. First, I, I want to say I'm not a surveyor. <laughs> I'm an arborist. So using that information, I went back and I randomly chose five locations to measure from the road's edge to the stone wall and took an average. That average turned out to be 8.25 feet, and the tree that he removed that I initially thought was a town tree was beyond the 8.25 feet on Mr. Chafee's property. So I no longer believed it was a, a town tree at, at that point. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, so your, your finding is that the, um, the uh, facts of the matter are that the tree was not in the, was not in the right of way, that it was on his personal property. It was property on his personal and, property and not in the town's right of way. And therefore not subject to the uh, regulation about shade trees on scenic roads. Exactly. Okay. Uh, one, one more other point, maybe for a future meeting, a future time. We, we should probably set a bylaw that defines uh, a consistent policy for if a resident does remove a town tree. I don't believe we have a bylaw. All we have is chapter 87, chapter 40 laws to, to go by. I think we should set a policy for if a resident removes a town tree, what would then be the penalty? And the penalty varies. Chapter 87 is different than chapter 40. If it's a scenic road, it's one fine. If it's a non-scenic road, it's another fine. So I think maybe we need to come up with a bylaw to have a consistent policy if a town tree is removed. Yeah, and that's a that's a good point because in, in the past, I know we've had residents that remove trees and instead of fining them by tree, we actually just require the replacement yeah. of trees, right? So, so to, we'd have to take a look at what we consider you know, an appropriate response. Exactly, and then going forward, be consistent. You don't do one thing in one case and another thing, just to make it fair. Yep. All right, are there any more questions? Yeah, right. I'd like to speak. I'm the one that filed the complaint. Um, come forward. You, um, uh, Mr. Holcraft, I'll allow it, but I'll ask you to, um, if you uh, feel that um, uh, Mr. Uh, if Dennis is, um, Findings are in error. We'll limit ourselves to the facts of the matter, please. I'll say what I have to say. Um, if it's mm. factual and relates to the oh, matter, that's it great. But it, uh, you're not going to give me a hard time there. Uh, let's see. I, I don't think I so. Think we're, we're in agreement. Good. 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 So first of all, uh, there's a backdoor agreement here. Three trees were planted because he cut a town tree down. That was a backdoor deal going on. Three trees I'm were planted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're, we're talking about the cutting of the two trees on his property now. One tree. Uh, uh, my understanding was the complaint was that two trees were cut. 
I and so we're talking about, I'm talking about the one that I filed the complaint on. <clears throat> okay, I, I thought your complaint was for two trees. Your tr complaint was for one, one of the trees. Okay, thank you for clarifying. You're very welcome. And it was a town tree. It was right on the edge of the road. And the little agreement that went on behind the closed doors in this town, he planted three trees on his property to make up for the trees he cut because there were town trees. That's, when, that's the and truth. When, and when did those town trees get cut? When did the town trees? About three, I don't remember the date, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe. Okay. I've so, been shuffled off the agenda for I'm, several times, so maybe it's two I'm, months ago. I'm a little confused because your complaint was for one tree, and now you're mentioning three trees were cut. So no. Did you, did you, you listen? No, no, no. You did. You said no. your complaint was for one tree. And That's now you're correct. In into, and now you're saying that one there was a backdoor deal? That's correct. That he would be, okay, That's. I'm not aware of a backdoor deal. Well, maybe you're not up on what goes on in this town. Maybe not. So three trees, if you listen to me, three trees were planted on his property by Mr. Shafee because that was the agreement made with certain people to make up for the town trees that he cut. Okay? So I didn't say three trees were cut. I said three trees okay. were planted. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I know what's going on in this town. The town was a town tree and it was cut. Two, as you say, two trees were cut. Okay? I know one was a town tree. Okay? And, and how do you know so, it's a town tree? How do we know? But yes, right on the road, it's a town tree. Okay, and we had this all investigated by the tree warden, and he came and he knew it was a town tree. And then there was a little back deal, plant tree trees and we'll make this go away. And I'm not letting it go away. He has to go by the procedures of everyone else in this town. Okay. Okay, that's and that's the reason I brought this to the board. All right? All right. And we're, and I, I've, I've driven past Mr. Chafee's property, property, and I've seen two stumps on his property. Uh -huh. Would you say if the stump, the stump, which stump do you think was on town property? The one closer to um, the mill pond, or the one further from mill pond? The one on the right hand side of his driveway, if you're heading up Blake Road. The one closer to and his driveway. And it wasn't a stump. It's cut pretty low. It's cut pretty level. Uh, yes, it, it's it's a very little sticking out. That's so it's, correct. It's, it's the one closer to his driveway. That's correct. Okay, thank you. So the one further from Mill Pond. That's right. Is, is what I would say. So the point I'm making here with my complaint is because this guy does whatever he wants in this town. He gets passes, and you guys are trying to do another pass tonight, which you did. That's okay. But I want to make sure my point is being heard tonight. Okay. Right. So don't. Try to tell me I'm in error of what I'm doing here tonight, because I'm not. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I missed something. Where did he plant the trees? On his property, probably about eight feet in from the road, maybe more. On Three his, of them. On his property? Yes, or? on his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I missing mm -hmm. something? Is yeah. there a problem with planting trees on? Your no, there's nothing. No, but I'm just saying. He did, what happens in the past is people cut trees and then they say plant some trees and make up for the difference, mm -hmm. and that's what happened on this situation. Yeah. So it's it's so it seems like this. So it seems it's, like it's consistent been, with what's it's consistent with what's happened before, which would not be a special deal. And so, um, Ms. Uh, Dennis, it's like it's like um, could you um, could you please come up here and um, and and address the uh, the distance of this um, particular tree site in question to the uh, center line, since you've been there and I, I haven't even I've driven past it and that's all I've done. Outside, but just, just barely. Oh, and I, I'd like to make it clear for the record that I made no deal with Mr. Chafee about planting trees. He did that on his own accord. And uh, so like I said, I went there, went to his stone wall, which is, I also went to Mass Mapper, and if you, if you look at Mass Mapper, the property line does follow the stone wall. So I went to the, the road surface, like I said, picked five random places, measured from the road edge to the stone wall, took an average of those distances, which turned out to be 8.5 feet, rounded off to eight feet, and that tree was, the back edge was I think 12, and the front edge was nine something off the edge of the road. So it's, it's a foot or two at least into his property, not within the town's right of way. And again, I, I made no deal with Mr. Chafee about planting trees. He did that on his own accord. Okay, and then uh, to make sure I understand what you did, the um, your measurement from you measured from the stone wall on his property to the edge of the asphalt, mm -hmm. and you used that to turn to make a baseline of how far the, the road edge was from the, from the property line to get a feel for it. And that eight and a half feet meant that where the stone wall wasn't. Mm -hmm. That 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 the property line would still be defined eight to eight and a half feet off there, and in by your measurement, the tree was the edge of the nearest edge of the tree closest to the road was nine feet from the asphalt edge, and it went further, maybe twelve feet, is yeah, if I heard right. you correctly. You get the exact diameter of the tree, but yeah, the tree was 
outside of the town's right of way within his property line. Okay. Close, but in his property line. All right. Thank you. Mr. Holcraft, do you have any specific measurements or anything else to, um, uh, to contribute no, to the discussion? It's, it's pretty hard to get, if you want to be, get down to inches here, it's pretty hard to get the edge of the road, seeing that the road hasn't been, the dirt keeps coming down and, and you, you know, the, the edge of the pavement would have to be cleared off with a shovel in order to get the proper measurements. So, as far as I know, it was a town tree and... Well, as far as you know... That's where I'm sticking at. So, I don't, we don't need to discuss it any further. I made my point. All right. Thank you. And I know what took place, so mm -hmm. you can move on now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Holcroft. Can I, can I make one more comment? Uh, yes, Dennis. The information I initially had <coughs> would put the boundary line behind the stone wall. So I the information I got out of the highway book would have put the stone wall would have been into the town's property about feet into the town's property. <coughs> I think we can all agree that stone walls typically are boundary lines anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and based on your initial determination that the property line was on the <coughs> side of the stone wall away from the road, that le led you to think that the town, that the right of way extended further off of the road. And once you determined that the property line was on the road side of the stone wall, that shrank <coughs> the side, that shrank where the, um, that shrank how far the right of way went off of the road and therefore was moved it off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holcraft. Do you have anything else? He's, he's the next item. Oh, oh, I have a oh, oh thank you. Before you, huh? before you move on. Uh, let's see. Uh, does it does it does it? It doesn't pertain to this. Yes. It does. Um, is it is it a matter of fact about this? I, 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 I would up? like to ask my question. And I would like to ask you, Mrs. Washburn, is this a question about the facts here? Yes, it is. And, okay, please come forward and ask your question about okay. the facts. If we if we get into a screed, we will be well, done. We're not going to get into a screed. We Excellent. Have a simple question to the board, to to the tree warden. Mm -hmm. you, you just indicated that when you looked at the boundaries, that the boundary line on the deed that you re, that you looked at the deed and the boundary line was beyond the stone wall. So initially, the information I had from the highway department book said that the right of way was 50 feet. So I subtracted the surface width and then half of the remaining distance on either side of the road would be what the town's right of way was. That put the stone wall on the town property. So finding that to be unusual, and I've also noticed other consistencies in the highway department information. Then, like I said, I took randomly five locations. I measured from the road edge to the stone wall. His deed says that the property goes to the front line of the property is, is the stone wall. So going with that information, I measured five locations, took an average, came out to be 8.25 feet, and the leading edge of that tree was nine feet, the back edge was actually got 10 or whatever the diameter was something. So that tree was a, at least a foot into Mr. Chafee's property. Okay, so when you did your measuring, uh, did you take into consideration the width of the stone wall? <laughs> Mrs. Washburn, I think he already answered that question. No, he did not. He did. He said that the property line was on the edge of the stone wall okay, closest to there. So therefore, right. the width of the stone wall is not relevant to where the town's right of way ends and Mr. Chafee's property begins because his stone wall is entirely on his own property. Oh, it's his property. The stone wall is on his property, so the width has nothing to do That's with it, just where the edge is. He, uh, it is what he said. No, what he said was is that when he read the highway department's description, the highway department's description said that the boundary was on the other side of the stone yes. wall. Yes, and as he said after that, he has noticed inconsistency in the highway drawings and that the deed in town records for Mr. Chafee's property indicates the stone wall is entirely on his property. And so there... That's not what he said either. That, I'm sorry. I didn't say entire no, he defines, defines the, the edge of his property. Yeah. Right. It defines. That's why I asked. Would it? Okay. Okay. That's why I asked if he took into consideration the width of. Yeah, it's the usual. Stone wall. It's usual and customary that it's the ed, the far the outside edge of a stone wall that's the defining part from mm -hmm. a surveyor perspective, unless it's otherwise explicitly defined. Mm -hmm. And that's then that's what you used. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we good? We're good. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Number six. We have uh, number six review tree report from the tree warden. 
No. We That's the wrong agenda. The agenda underneath. <coughs> the agenda under. And what we have two. Yeah, we had to update it at the last minute because things came in. No one told me. Number six. Number, Number six. six. All right, there we go. Yep. I, I see your name, Mr. Holcraft, and that's why you did stay up here. Uh, so hold on a second. <laughs> And since this is the official agenda, I need to mark my notes onto here. All right, the next one is uh, Mr. Hol Mr. Holdcraft, minutes of meetings and recording of meetings. Uh, Kelly, we're going to start with Mr. Holdcraft's concerns. He has to be on the agenda to discuss this. That's okay. The that I have. All right, uh, go ahead, Mr. Holdcraft. Okay, I'm on the planning board here, mm -hmm. and we're grossly behind on minutes. I called up our chairman, Kevin Erkler. Mm -hmm. who is related to Sharon Mahoney, who used to be our former uh, chairman. And I asked for the Zoom, minute, Zoom meetings, meaning the audios, mm -hmm. and I also asked for audio uh, tapes. And he out flat told me no. Twice I've called him on the phone. He's told me no twice. That's our stuff, and it's we're not giving it back to the town. Okay. I then told him, I says, I've talked with the... Uh, AG, and I've also been talking to the Secretary of State, and they said that that is the that is the property of the town of Brookfield, which it is. That's a fact. You like facts, right? I so, love facts. I want I want all the Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. and I want the audios, and I want the minutes that we're behind on in a year, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And the planning board is under scrutiny uh, for being whatever the, the court we're in court. Uh, for some members not being up to par, so we're in the court on, on those charges concerning the Tassie property. So I'm trying to get a handle on which end is up, and I haven't got the minutes, and I haven't got the Zooms. Mm -hmm. And it's been a year and a half, and I, I want that, I want, I'm a member of the planning board, and I want all those tapes and mm -hmm. audios and Zooms, and I don't want to keep getting stroked. I want the stuff. Okay. And so, and, 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 I, and I also found out through the other town, other board meetings, other boards, boards, they haven't done their minutes either. So I want to know what's going on. You selectmen are supposed to be overseeing our town, uh, and when I'm on a, I'm, I'm, I'm on their planning board, and I, and I, they give me minutes, and it's a year old. How am I going to remember what's a year old? I'm supposed mm -hmm. to have minutes done within 30 to maybe 90 days at the most, mm -hmm. and and this is grossly, grossly not being done by our town. And it's not just a planning board; it's the whole town. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what you guys are doing and how we're going to go forward. And when is this material going to be returned? Now, we didn't have a secretary for a while, but we got one now. And I keep going to her, why are you not doing minutes? Well, uh, the, the chairman only gives me a couple things at a time. And I says, well, why is that? Well, that's what she's doing. I said, you got time? She goes, yeah. So I want to see all that stuff dumped in her office, and then she can do her work as she sees fit to get the minutes mm -hmm. caught up. Okay. And I want to know what we're going to do about getting that stuff. And I filed, it, I filed a request last night with the town clerk, um, requesting all this stuff. <clears throat> okay. Now, the planning board's elected, correct? That's correct. All right, so every member on the planning board is elected. That's correct. Okay. Except the secretary. Uh, yes, the secretary. Uh, or uh, clerk, whatever you want to say. I'd say right. they're, they're not a member of the planning board. They serve the planning board. Right. Right. We, had had one, we had one that was like a, I don't know if you want to call her an alternate. Christine Wasman, I think her name was. I mm -hmm. think she's here tonight. Hi there. Yeah, yeah and, and there's the alternate member who votes under certain circumstances. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, it's like I, I'm not sure, as as a a board of fully elected members, I'm not sure what action you take, what action you expect the select board to take, to force its will on mm -hmm. another elected board. The other elected boards, they're elected by the town mem by the by the citizens of this town, just like us. They have their remit mm -hmm. and their yeah. and they have the things they're responsible for. Now, I agree with you. The minutes are important, the minutes should be done. But I would I'd, I'd like you to I, I, what do you expect this board to do other than maybe Talk to people. Uh, talk to the uh, member, other members of the select board, and say, you know, you really uh, ought to get your minutes done, because <laughs> fundamentally, the select board has no enforcement power over a, a an elect a board of other elected members. Mm -hmm. 
I, I understand all this elected yeah. stuff, but it's still, you have to ins insist on the elected boards and the regular committees that are not elected, you have to insist that they have to get the minutes. You have to stay on them. And they just can't, people, just because I'm an elected member, I just can't go willy-nilly and do whatever I want. No, you can't. I'll do what I want. No. You have to insist on elected members that you have to get the work done. Yeah. I, I, to a certain extent, I think that's up to the voters of the town to insist that they're elected board members. No, you guys, yeah. the, you guys are at the helm. You have to have some kind of procedure to, to speak to the boards and the committees to get their committees. I mean, or it, have, it, the, have the administrator, as, you know, we, we have her do it. Yeah, so. I mean, you just can't, you just can't let this go on. I, I understand your concern. How about your board? How many, are you guys got your minutes up to date? No. How far are you behind, Brad? Roughly 120 sets. 120 sets of minutes? Yes, sir. Shame on this town. Shame on all of us. It's been brought up, it's been brought up at prior meetings, yeah. which is why. So, it was, it, it, how's anybody going to remember minutes? Minutes are a document of what is actually taking place at a meeting. Yeah. And, then, and we're in, a, in the planning board, planning board's in court. Right now, we're being attacked saying that we're, we're not, we didn't do our job, mm -hmm. or it was illegal, certain members did illegal stuff. I'm on that board, and I'm not going down with the ship, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to know what's in the minutes, and I want to know what's been done on the audios. <clears throat> okay. The audios have all been deposited in the Dropbox, so we have all of the Zoom recordings. All the Zooms are in the Dropbox? Yes. All of them? We received them all yesterday. Yes. Okay. All yep. right. So um, when, I, when, I, when you and I spoke, yep. I reached out to IT and asked them to make it make a site or a Dropbox so that the um, audios, which are too large for what we had available, mm -hmm. had a location that they could be put. So now they're all in the custody of the town. Okay. So what are we going to do to move forward so to, 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 get, to get this whole mess, the whole town, all the committees up to par? Well, I mean, I see this as a, uh, as a twofold issue. There is one. There is the, all right, we're do, going, we are going to do better going forward. What's that mean, better? Better? That means that we're, mean? we're going to get our meeting, we're going to get our minutes done. It's like the goal is to get the minutes done on time. And I don't, what, what that time frame is, I don't know. I'm new to the chairmanship. I, this, this, this issue was brought up at the department head meeting earlier today. Uh, when when Kelly and I met with the department heads, and uh, it, Mike Siri brought it up as a concern, mm -hmm. and so it's like that's so it's new to it's new to my radar, and therefore it's like I haven't had a chance to think about it and do all my research. But the intention is going forward is to get the minutes done and submitted in in a reasonable period of time, and then and then in parallel with that, go back and fill in the holes. For the missing minutes it's like and that's and i'll be it's like we have i don't know how completely we'll be able to do that because it depends on where the holes are and whether all the members of that committee have moved on from the time that the minutes are missing from i i don't know it's it's sort of it's an unknown unknown it's so we can i know a lot of committees have those people have moved on that yeah. were doing minutes right. and so and on. so and that's very right. that's of, important and that's why we've got to stay up on this right. and, and that and that's mm. why to me the one of the first order of this is is let's stop digging this hole we're, we're in a hole where we're behind on minutes so first order of this is stop digging the minutes the meetings that we have now we're going to we're going to we're going to try we're going to try and get them done on completed on time i know we're i i know in our agenda today we're approving minutes from me meetings that happened in the last month or two i believe and so we're and so demon so to a certain extent leading by example and then also identify what are we missing minutes for and what is our and and work with the various committees and boards to do that now for the committees the select board uh, as the appointing body for many of the committees in town the select board does have a certain amount of authority over them for the elected boards the ultimate authority resides with the voters the select board can cajole it can encourage it can facilitate but if the board doesn't want to do it the select board has no enforcement power with a fellow elected board and therefore our, our, our scope for action there is limited compared to the committees. 
Can can I just make, back to our government. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. I'm, make, I'm doing can, all the time. Can I make a recommendation? I mean, because I guess speaking kind of as a resident myself is I would like to see the same thing. Catch me if I'm speaking out of terms here, Kelly, but the town clerk is responsible for the meeting minutes. No, mm -hmm. he's not. No. He is a repository, a repository for, a meeting for the minutes. meeting minutes. He's not responsible. He's not the meeting but, minute police. Okay. And he is not responsible or in charge, nor does he have any authority to make anybody so, give him the right. minutes. But so, they're supposed to. So he is to. the repository. He is the repository, and yes. Does he maintain also the mine town government? I guess what I'm Does getting. Does he maintain it? Yeah. What, what I'm getting. Can he is, upload it? Can he yes. give us a list? Because here's the problem. People like cultural council is a perfect example. If you look on my town government, there's none posted on there. But I They've do know that in. they turn them in to Mike. So I would like a report so from someone. So there is a law that they have to be turned into Mike. There is no law that they have to be posted. Right. So what I would like is a report from Mike of what what's has been missing. turned in and what okay. so we can figure out what's missing in the town yeah, yeah. well and I, I agree that's part of that saying okay let's identify let's pick 10 years as an arbitrary number just because i, I got to start somewhere and say okay let's look back over 10 years what meetings have we had of those meetings which ones do we does it appear we don't have minutes mm -hmm. for we can check my town government we can check mike's records and then after that we can say okay for these dates, yeah, we found something on my town government. We found Mike has something in his stash um, that he's recorded as his uh, as his responsibility, and then and then we got okay for agricultural commission. Here's what we're missing. For cultural council, here's what we're missing. For town hall improvement, here's what we're missing. For uh, board of health, here's what we're missing. For planning board, here's what we're missing. For select board, here's what we're missing. So and then he may not out. he may not necessarily have a list of all of the agendas for which minutes are missing. So he wouldn't know which one, not necessarily know. He'll know what he has, but he may not necessarily know what's missing because he he'd if it's not on the website, he'd have to cross-reference all of the agendas. Mm -hmm. And those he doesn't have to keep. He doesn't have to keep I the don't agendas. believe so. No, that, uh, not that if they're posted. So some yeah. of them that are posted, he doesn't need to yeah. keep. So how, minutes post, are supposed to reflect how are the meetings posted in this town? Is they're it posted only on town, that website. On my town government. So yes. That is the official posting yeah. location. So like now, as the select board, <laughs> you have the authority to choose the official posting location. I think it should be my town government, or if the website can handle something, um, up for anything I'd electronic. Say, I'd say my yeah. town government yeah. needs to be the location. Yeah. because. Yeah. Well, because well, that's what the official site location. is now. But if yeah. you're not happy with that, you can change it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from what from my use of it. The my town government suits our needs. It's more right now. The issue is more people availing themselves of it than a limitation of its capabilities. They need I to mean, to the to the point of it's not hard. If it's I not need, hard to add a file. No, to if I if I if I need to schedule a meeting for seven o'clock on Thursday and it's seven o two on Tuesday and so therefore it's forty seven hours and fifty eight minutes before, I can't schedule the meeting until seven o two because it will not let me schedule a meeting less than forty eight hours in advance unless I declare it an emergency and. It's my, a good safeguard, and 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 I and I appreciate the fact that it it makes it very hard for someone to schedule a meeting improperly. I, I'm I'm happy that feature exists. So, um, that's I, I, just a moment, Mrs. Washburn. Um, so, I, so Mr. Holcraft, thank you for bringing this to our attention. I'm. I I don't think we're going to resolve it today. I as as the new chair. I I need to think about this to, to decide what the best path forward is, um, especially for the select board and the appointed committees, for the appoint for the elected boards. Um, I'm open to ideas, but as they are autonomous, I'm not sure what action the select board can do other than encourage them. Yeah. Tom, I think that's something we actually need to discuss and take a vote on. Um, okay, uh, let's see. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Mrs. Washburn, you had a, a quick question? Well, last night we went to the, the board health meeting and they had 
two attorneys down. We need you to speak into yeah, the yes, mic, could, could please, so up, please? it's on the recording. Thank you. We need the mic to pick you up for the people. Sure. So last night, the Board of Health had a, um, they had two representatives from the uh, Massachusetts Board of Health, whatever they were. They were two attorneys who deal with the open meeting laws and the meeting minutes and this and that. And they put on a wonderful presentation explaining what the open meeting laws were, how long you had to submit the meeting minutes in, how long you had until they had to be, um, you, you know, you have to have them approved and you had, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. They were wonderful when they came in. It was a, you know, it was a very, it was very informational, and, mm -hmm. and I think every board in this town should have the ability to have an organization like that organization that came in last night and speak to each department about how they're supposed to handle their meeting minutes. Now, Sharon Mahoney, as an example, David said that she is no longer on the board and she hasn't got any meeting minutes in. Um, Christine recorded every hearing that we had about Mr. Tassie with her phone sitting right there. There are audio recordings of every single meeting. Those should have been submitted to the town. Those belong to the town. They don't belong to her personally. She was working as the clerk for the, for the planning board and that was her job. And as her job, she recorded those meeting minutes. So those belong to the town because she was a paid employee at the time. That's number one. Number two, anybody that leaves an office like Mrs. Mahoney knew that she was leaving and she wasn't rerunning for her office. She should have had all her ducks in a row and had all the documents in here before she left as, as a, an elected official. And, and she should have turned them into the town That's, clerk. I, I understand, but we, be let, I, would li I would like us to focus on going forward, not on recriminations for what's happened. But there should be a bylaw on the town books that says that if you're leaving an elected or, or appointed position, that any documents that you have that need to be submitted should be turned in by a certain date after the election. I understand what you're getting at. It's it, my thought is though that yeah. my my ex I would be surprised if we didn't have. Well, I won't say I'd be surprised. Well, I no, would actually, we have the fewest number of bylaws in the state of Massachusetts, and and honestly, the, mm -hmm. from a standpoint of of what of it being recommended as a bylaw, it sounds like the state law and the open meeting law defines what the standards are. Yeah, and, and we've been falling and short of that standard. Clearly, and, okay. And, and I would, and, and, but yeah, but a bylaw. Let me just finish my thought, ahead, if you don't mind. Uh, but a bylaw is not going to. I don't see how uh, having a separate bylaw or even having a separate policy is going to do anything different than whether or not there's a state law in place. All it is is duplication. Yeah, I think fundamentally, to your point, uh, it, we need to focus one on what we're doing going forward. In the instances regarding where those those documents can actually be obtained by some appropriate means through communication and negotiation with people that have possession of those materials, we can make a reasonable effort to to complete the record, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But um, I, I think I think that's the scope of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would I would also observe that I would not say it is the responsibility of any one member of a board that the responsibility is the board's responsibility to post minutes as an entity and therefore the responsibility ri resides with the board exactly. and with the members of the board not with any one member yeah. of the board i would say the uh, i would expect the chair would be responsible for leading the charge for that but that it would that the other members if the chair if the chair is rotating out then it then i think we need then maybe a, a, a nudge to the other members saying hey if this person's going away you might want to make sure they get all their minutes in yeah. and well, just and, and right and yeah. fundamentally i mean we're we've been approving what minutes going back to like 2014 i think or yes. 27 yeah. yeah so so when so, i when i started here i i became aware of the issue in the selectman's office no minutes had been posted for 10 years roughly 10 years roughly 10 mm -hmm. years that's, that's From the time I started, because I made it a point that going forward, we are, we are supposed, as the select board, we are supposed to be the benchmark, not the worst offender. All minutes will be done timely, and they have been from the date that I started, and back minutes have been added to your meetings for approval. So that we're doing a catch-up. We have a plan to, to catch up on this 
for our board. Now, what the other boards do, you have power, like I said um, before, over your appointed boards and committees. If they don't do their minutes, you don't have to reappoint them. You don't have to let the boards and committees stand. However, there are some you have to by statute, but the elected, as you stated, that's, that's entirely up to those boards. You can cajole, you can suggest, you can, you can request. Um, request, but there's no teeth. There's absolutely nothing you can do if they refuse. Excuse me, I beg to differ. You can report them to the Secretary of State. That's okay, we do have state organizations that are set up to handle those types of things. And as the, the body that runs our town, the three of you are our selectmen, you're the body that runs our town. So if they're not complying with the laws the way that they should be, then it's up to this board to make the decision to contact the state and notify the state so that the state can step in and the state can get done. But, but obviously, you don't have enough teeth to do. And what can the state do at that point? Are you aware? They can get fined. So if, if they're not doing their minutes, they can get fined. If somebody files a public records request and those records are not available, they can, cl they can start a civil suit in, in the court. And if they are knowingly not doing their minutes, after being explained that this is the law, you have to do it this way, that is a willful act, and they're not covered by professional liability, nor is town council available to help them. And what happens in a case of, um, we'll pick the planning board. Let's say it's an all new planning board, and they're up to date, but prior planning boards weren't up to date. Then what do you do in that instance when there's- So what I can do is I can reach out to the attorney general's office and let them know what the situation is and ask what they would recommend we do going forward and if they would be willing to monitor us. Yeah. Excuse That's me. what they told me down in Boston. They said come before the selectmen, ask for a request, talk to the members or who's always in charge of the planning board and if they don't do what they, they won't do what you need, they said they'll come down here and they'll step in and they'll take charge of the town and they will, they will make these so-called elected people that you can't touch, they will make them get their minutes done. And I don't want to do that. I'm trying to do this within the town. Well, I got advice from them, and that's what they said. And There's other legal liability other than just the planning board, so. Right. I, I think after the meeting with the attorneys last night, I think those attorneys are also, are, are probably at the point when they were looking at our um, website for the town, our, our whatever government website it is, and they couldn't find any meeting minutes to like 90% of our boards. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're going to pursue going to the state um, and, and letting the state know that we just don't have it together. Because the meeting minutes okay. aren't on that website, right. on the yep, Mytown government. Yeah. They're not there, they're not yeah. there. I can't, I can't wave my magic wand and fix it and fix it in the past. We're not asking okay, you to. but and so the first order of business is to go forward. Um, Kelly, question. Um, this started with Mr. Holcraft mentioning he had specific requests regarding the planning board. Um, to your knowledge, um, do the recordings in the that we have in the Dropbox are they going to address his request? Are they going to? Are they substantial? So are they enough? Do they I respond to his request? I have some confusion about your request. Okay, I'll see if I can help you. The way you, the way you phrased it, yeah. it sounds like what you're looking for is for all of this to be brought to the town and made into minutes. Or are you looking for actual copies? I know you want to view some of them. The executive session recordings you can view because you're a planning board member, but you can't. You have to view them in isolation here in the town hall. That's correct. Because their executive that, session and the issue been, is not closed. Been resolved, right? Correct. That issue. Um, do you want actual copies of these for yourself, or are you looking for these just to be given to the town? No, I want actual copies given for you as an elected member of the planning board. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I want to be able to review myself the audios. I got to pull them off the, the uh, where you have them, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to have to actually get you a place here at the town hall that you can watch them. Okay. So, Kelly, yeah. could we give him full copies of the? open sessions of the planning board and we would only yes need, okay. once we have them yes but they're in the dropbox now i thought no we're not th those are zoom meetings they're not minutes right you want us to give him copies of the recordings i thought that's what mr holcraft was well, i like that too if i can you know and i like copies you of said you don't have a computer what are you going to watch them on i mean you can <laughs> have them i'm just wondering how you're going to access them 
I've, as long as you give me the copies, I have someone that will help me. Okay. It's already been arranged, but I need to have. Okay, you know, so have so the Zoom meetings with, and the, with and all public records requests, right? There's a form that we fill out. We don't provide the thumb drives for them. They're okay. extremely expensive because they're multiple gigabytes. Yeah, and they only hold so much, right? Right. Do so you? you need to provide us with a thumb drive, and we'll drop whatever we can on what you got. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his, his, his tech support will make sure he comes with the right piece of gear. Yeah. yeah. I'll find out what the um, size is. Yeah. Okay. So, Kelly, you can coordinate with uh, Mr. Holdcraft on getting him the, uh, the recordings of the open session of the planning board, and we'll get him started with that. The Zoom meetings, but, you know. Yeah, that's what I meant. The Once we have the thumb drive. Now, not that this is anybody's business, but I'm going out for a medical reason, and I won't be back till next Thursday. Okay. There's a time limit on this request. I can ask um, Jacob to help us with getting the recordings, which ones are the right ones, in for Mr. Holcraft, but I need that thumb drive. Without that, I can't help him. Are you willing to wait till I come back? Yes, I, I will give you time, yes. Okay, I'll be I, back next Thursday. I mean, I did the, the I'll be back day, a week from the today. The 10-day request for, you know, for information, but I mean, I'm will, you know, if, if you say you're gonna have it in 15 days, I'm not gonna hold Yeah, it. so get me a yeah. thumb drive. Drop it off. Drop it off here on Monday, yeah. and when I come back on Thursday, I'll see that Jacob gets you. Yeah, I can what get you the need. Fourth of July in there somewhere. So yeah, yeah that's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, so I can hook up with you on, you know, after after the fourth at some point. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Can I also make a motion of having? Mike Siri, take a look at my town government, see what's missing, see what he has in cross reference, and come up with a. What's up? We can make a request of him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want a motion to make that request, and then you all vote it, and then the board asks this. Is that what you're looking for? Do we need to, or can yeah? We can make the request. Yeah, I'd like to make yeah. the request. Would it would it make more? I understand where you're going, Brad. Would it make more sense to have Lois or Karen do the first pass on that via my town government? No, it no. would not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> <laughs> or someone else in the office. <laughs> nope. Okay. Mike, Mike is the official keeper of those records, right. and no and one else can go in his vault yeah. and find them. Right. And, and Mike can go to my town government just as well as Lois or Karen. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's and he's that's actually nice. an admin. There may be some backdoor way to get a report mm -hmm. that I'm not aware of all right. to get a list of all the missing minutes. All right, uh, so so are we doing a motion to uh, make that? We, I, I'll take a motion for the uh, for the board to ask Mike to uh, to take an inventory of the meetings and uh, whether the uh, and for all the boards and committees and whether they have a um, there are minutes on file for those meetings uh, going back um, to. Can you not make your motion quite so convoluted? Because okay. it, it, uh, okay. it needs uh, to be uh, more direct. Let me okay. Then let Please. me rephrase. Um, I move that we ask Mike Siri to um, uh, review the records and provide an inventory of meetings and whether those meetings have minutes on file for town boards and committees. Okay. Wait a minute. You want a motion to ask the town clerk, A.K.A. Mike Siri, to review the inventory of all. Of meetings, of, 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 of all meetings. Of, of, the, of the of his of his records for a um, listing of meetings and whether they whether minutes are publicly available. Okay, stop. Yep. That, that, that's not true. Yep, this needs death yes. is way too overbroad. Yes. From from July Thank you. that was from July first, twenty thirteen, which is ten years ago, from Saturday. And we'll go back 10 years because that's kind of what we talked about, and I think that's, I, I think that number, de and it's like, and that will give us a feel for how deep the hole is. And like I said, first thing we do, let's stop digging, and then we start filling it in, and hopefully we don't bury ourselves in it. We just fill it in enough we can stay on top of the pile of dirt okay. until we're up at the surface. 
And I think going forward, I mean, for anyone on any committee, they, I mean, I'm not adding this to it, but if you're on a committee or a board and you notice that it's not getting done, see something, say something. Yeah, I, I think I think we need to, I, we can discuss this, but I think we need to uh, point out to the committees that, it, that they're expected to produce minutes, and if they don't, they're not doing their job, and we may need to consider not reappointing some people to committees. And unfortunately, given how some of the committees are understaffed, that may make the committees defunct. Yeah, this is kind of, <laughs> this is but, kind but, of, yeah, yeah. Well, see, well, see, and, and, and but, I, I think, yeah. So, so another thing that we did is we got the all boards clerk who was supposed to be assisting with minutes. That was a primary function of that job, is mm -hmm. to help minutes for the most regulated boards of the zoning board, the planning board, and the ZBA. Mm -hmm. And are those meetings being posted that... No, she is she is very behind in those meeting minutes. Um, they're extenuating circumstances, and they're now being caught up, from what I understand, because I I actually went down and had a serious chat that this needs to get done. This is supposed to be prioritized. So I'm waiting to see if what I was promised is going to happen. I'll find out when I hear from the Planning Board and Conservation and ZBA if their minutes, and I'm watching to see if their minutes are uploaded. CONCOM's minutes are pretty up to date, actually. They're closer than the other boards. So. All right. Mr. Gallagher, you, did yeah. you have a question? So I, I, I wanted to point something out. The first time that I went to our, our website, um, if you go to the, the, uh, the, the town's website. The town's website. Okay, yeah. It will say like in certain areas, these are minutes and it only shows like two. And it makes it look really, really bad. I think it would be in the best interest of the town to take those off. Don't delete them. Make sure we have them on the, the other side mm -hmm. and get them off there. Because if like those people who that meet, what helped me last night, they could have been looking at those because they said mm -hmm. we were horrible. And if okay. you look at that, it looks like we had minutes from like 10 years ago, yeah. two postings, that's it. No, that, thank you. That makes sense that right. it's like there should be one place and everyone everyone else says, go look over there. Right, and, exactly. and my town government is where that is over, where over there is. Right, exactly. The exactly. Okay. Yeah. That, thank you. That's good to know. Um, Kelly, is that something that you can... Uh, can look into um, yeah. in the next couple of weeks. Can I make mm -hmm. a sep separate motion, or did we vote that yet? Um, I have asked for the motion. That. I don't think I've gotten it yet about asking Mike uh, to so look So technically, back as a chair, you're not actually supposed to make yeah. the motion. No, I said I, said <laughs> I asked for it. You, so I, but you're asking for yeah. a really specific convoluted motion, okay. so, so you're so actually making the motion. Can I try to make the motion? You Please go ahead. Okay, <laughs> so let me try to make one motion. The first one is uh, that uh, we're going to formally request a, a 10 year audit of the uh, meetings to meeting minutes uh, from the town clerk. So moved. Second. And you actually, well, you moved. He, I moved. Second. Oh, you, oh, second. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any, uh, I think we've, uh, is there any more discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can I make a second motion regarding this? Going forward on a quarterly basis, make a similar request if, if it's not re received from the town clerk. Um, to keep, uh, yeah, to do the same thing. Second. To do second. the same thing. Yeah. I mean, second. Yeah. All right. Did you second it, Brad? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, Beth, the idea is to uh, give us visibility into the recent performance so that we can do right, a better so job of helping helping the town stay on top of this mm -hmm. and help keep us from digging deeper. All right. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And did, did we agree, or do we need to make a motion that it all be posted on my town government? It's already the official spot, so you okay. don't need okay. to do that again. Right. You did say that you agree that that's where it should stay. So. Okay. You don't need a motion to redo that. All right. All right. Mr. Holcraft, thank you for bringing this yep. to our attention. It's, it's an you. important issue. Yep, thank you for hearing me. All right, no worries. All right, agenda item number seven, tree review tree report. You're back, yeah. my good sir. Yes. Before we move on to that, just a point of clarification for my notes. Um, so you're going to do this quarterly only if you don't get a response, or are you going to do this quarterly period? I thought it's quarterly period. Okay. Yes. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I wrote it right. Yeah. That, that was my intent also, that it's quarterly going forward. Okay. And I mean, and I would say we'd ask Mike, the first report should be up through the June, what kind of time frame today? are you going to give them to get that done? Because it's, that is a very tall order. 
It's, and if he's going through oh, stacks of paper, yeah. it's undefined, and I would be, I would be okay with him saying, okay, I got fiscal year 23 done, then 22, and if he chunks it up, okay. rather than making him, uh, rather than asking him to save everything for the end. Um, I mean, my thought is, as long as we're making progress on it, it's okay. It's one of those, we, and we'd have to negotiate. I think he'd need to be here and say, I can do it in this much time, rather than mm -hmm. us just dropping a timeline on him. I don't think that's fair to him. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. All right, Kelly, we're all set with this? As far as I'm concerned. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, since I took on this position, one of the reasons I took this position is the town has a, a dead tree problem. I think you all might remember a few years back we had a gypsy moth infestation, uh, now called the spongy moth, and it stressed the trees, didn't necessarily kill them within that um, particular year, but it, it defoliated a lot of trees. They used a lot of stored energy to try to refoliate, sending them into the next season stressed, and they don't necessarily die in the year of the infestation, but in the subsequent years, I think everybody who's driven around town has seen dead oak trees everywhere. Um, since I took this position on, I've had uh, 15 requests from residents to, to remove trees, and they, they range in a hazard rating from extreme to high to moderate. So the moderate is the lowest and extreme is the worst. I have 15 trees from resident requests. I also did a, a visual inventory of, of what I believe are three of the roads in town that have the most dead trees, Molasses Hill, Wells Road, and Weber Road. And in total, I have 65 trees that are, need to be removed, most of which are dead. And that number will continue to rise as I inventory other streets in town. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, no, I would just say, for, for the ones in a dead condition, it's like that's a... Um, there's the, you you didn't you you haven't assigned risk ratings to those yet? Uh, no, no, not all of them are dead. I haven't assigned okay. a risk rating. I, I did a yeah, most are dead. In, in tree risk evaluation, there's there's several steps. Is the first evaluation would just be a limited visual assessment, determining if it needs to go or not. The second would be a, a level two risk assessment, which I did do on all of the resident requests. Mm -hmm. So I have a more detailed risk assessment for the resident request. And then the final risk assessment of level three is almost never done unless it's a historic tree or you're gonna use a lot of equipment, uh, like sounding, sonar, things that wouldn't be done. So on the roads that have a lot of dead trees, I just did a level one assessment. Mm -hmm. And the dead ones all obviously will need to be removed. And the resident request ones, I, I prioritize those higher because the residents had called them. Okay, and the uh, the ones on Molasses Hill Road, Weber, and uh, Town and uh, Wells, yeah, are those are all on town right of way? They are. Okay, they are all in the town right of way. Um, so I found more than were in our town, and I have yet to, but I will speak to National Grid to see if we can get them to do some of this work for us. Mm -hmm. I did that previously on on Allen Road. Uh, they removed 23 trees, National Grid removed 23 trees on Allen Road at no cost to the town. Four of those trees were our town trees that they removed for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try the same thing with these roads. Okay. And I, I would like to start uh, with the resident requests first, which is going to take up a lot of our annual budget. That's going to take up most of the um, we operating budget? We have the Warren article. And I know I have the Warren article, but the resident requests alone will probably go through most of the, the annual budget, the uh, 12, uh, You should use a, well, yeah, okay. All right, never mind. And, and I, yeah, I use the, do I intend to use the Warren article to address the dead trees, but I'd also like to leave some in reserve in the event of a horrible storm or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so the operational budget, you said, is pretty much going to get eaten by the... The 15 resident requests. 15 yeah. resident requests. How much was the Warren article for? 12.5. No, no, the operating budget was 12.5. I thought the warrant article. But the warrant article was from a prior year. It was it. It's down to 50,000. That That's right. what's remaining in it is 50,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, the operational budget. It sounds like it's covered by this. But do you do you have a 
And it sounds like you're trying to bring in National Grid for these three roads. Yeah, I'm going right? to try to see what we can get the grid to do for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, do you know, and I know with National Grid it's always a little bit, like yes. getting answers is sometimes tricky. Yeah. So I get that, right? Um, when do you think is a reasonable amount of time to know what we're going to get potentially from them so that then we can take a look at that that warrant article budget and maybe start programming the the burn down of, of what's not going to get handled by them yeah and um well they have their budget constraints too i i i have a relationship with the this central forester for national grid she's pretty good about getting back to me but obviously like i'll make the request she's got to send somebody out to do their own evaluation yes. and then depending on their budget and resources for the town when i called her about allen road she had already told me that there was no more tree work scheduled for this year in brookfield but then she sent her forester out there to look at it and she came back and said oh yeah we're going to take down 23 of those trees how many were the town trees I'm sorry. Uh, there was four town trees but she took down 23 in all on allen road Okay, thank you. Uh, and they're, they're, again, their concern is their transmission their lines. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. hopefully some of these trees, and they are near their lines, they might want to just do it oh, anyway yeah. for their yeah. own benefit. The last hill road loses power often. Yes, and, and they, we have a, a dead oak tree problem in town, which is one of the reasons I wanted to take on this job to see if I could help do something about that. How about a generator? Now the power never goes out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so going to go solar. We, we did go out to bid for tree work. Yes. It was um, a successful procurement. Mm -hmm. We have um, I, the most responsible, responsive bidder uh, signed the contract today. And uh, as chief procurement officer, I will be countersigning that. Um, and I wanted to explain the uh, contract with you prior to that it's basically it's an up to $55,000 amount it's a per day um, fee that can be that that is adjusted depending on what we're using if we're using uh, a chipper and ground crew it's one fee one price if if they're if we're using um, our town highway guys for doing the ground crew and chipping then it's a different price for the cutting and the removal of the tree if we need a loader it's another price so so um they were all very reasonable the the firm that got the bid was rusty's tree and his reputation is actually we couldn't find anybody say anything bad about him all the other towns were really impressed with his work um and he was able to furnish the appropriate bonds. I spoke with the insurance company. I don't have the bond yet, but they assured me that he's getting the bond. It's, a, it's actually a prevailing wage bond. And so as of July 1st, um, Mr. Tucker can start working on his trees. So. Mm -hmm. I, I checked uh, Mr. Russ' references, and the only negative thing that any one of the people I spoke to said was, the only problem you'll have with Jim is his scheduling because he's so busy. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's actually not a negative. That's just, yeah. a, just a heads up, right? That you may have to wait a little bit, but... He's coming to my house, too. It's, it's a scheduling. It's yeah. a scheduling <laughs> challenge. <laughs> But I think every, every but you had to agree to be available based on what the, the, the um, bids were within a certain time frame for emergencies, so he's going to have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chair, may I ask you one question or two? Um, because we had this discussion at the budget here and I didn't get answers. Well, I, um, Mr. Holcraft, if you have questions about the contract, I think those would be appropriate for the uh, for the town administrator. It's not the contract, but just in general, but the tree work here has been um, is that something that needs to happen in meeting or is that something that you could discuss with him offline just because we, ha we have a large agenda and it's already 730. I just want to ask him a couple quick questions. Um, I just want to know if our highway department is going to be working with us to keep the price down. Okay. The, um, uh, if, if, if well, he, that's that's yes. why I, I, I said that it was quoted with or without. So if they're not available, they can do it at a specific fee. Otherwise, we can have our highway guys do it. 
if, the, yeah. if their schedule works out to do the work. And so I would, I would say that the, um, g given the structure, uh, Mr. Holker, I've given the structure of the contract that we get a lower rate if we provide the, uh, if I understand it, the ground crew and, and the chipper, yep. then I would say that yep. we would certainly want to, um, want to prioritize that work or prioritize that mode of operation based on Ryan's, on Ryan's crew's availability. And the thought being that I would, I would say, uh, Dennis, if you're having trouble getting that scheduled and so therefore you're either having to leave things up longer than you're comfortable with because you can't get Ryan there and so you need to go with a higher rate, um, let us know. And so that way we can understand why what, what's going on that's pulling Ryan away from that. And if it's a safety issue, it's a safety issue. But ideally, it's like if Ryan's got some flexibility in his schedule, he'll, he'll be able to be the ground crew on that day and let us get the lower rate. Okay. Mr. Holcraft, was that yeah, sufficient for your concern? Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. I would have him to work whatever schedule he comes up with. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think that's uh, to a certain extent going to be, and if, if Rusty's tree service is primarily scheduling, as in you can't get them early, you have to wait for them, then I think that's more likely that you'll be able to align with Ryan's crew because he'll have more time to say, oh yeah, we're, we have Rusty's coming in on, the, on these two days, so he'll make sure not to schedule things, he'll leave his guys open to work on as ground crew on those days, so I think those kind of work well together in this case. Like they have in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's worked with Tom before, right? Yes, he has, and I'd, I'd like to just add one more thing. He gave us a, a very reasonable rate. I agree, I yeah. see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very reasonable. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions for for Dennis? All right, thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda: uh, Christine Weissman retaining wall collapse. This is supposed to go. Is Mrs. Weissman here? Yeah. Uh, would you come up? Hi, how are you today? Doing good. Um, so in April, the street cleaner came by my house and knocked my retaining wall down in the front of my house. Okay. And I took pictures and I sent them to somebody here in the office, mm -hmm. and they told me that it has to come before the board. Okay. My so. neighbor uh, witnessed it, and I talked to Ryan, Mr. Ryan P., and he told me that another neighbor witnessed it and said it fell down all by itself. So I called that neighbor because she works here, and she said she didn't tell him that. Okay. Um, so I would just like my retaining wall uh, repaired. Mm -hmm. I don't need a brand new one. Uh, my husband's a musician. He's the um, music teacher at the elementary school. We don't know how to fix stuff like that. Oh, your husband's Mark. Yes. He teaches all my kids. In, he's, oh, okay. So I, okay. Yeah, and so we just want it repaired so it looks nice. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. But you didn't, you, you didn't see it happen. No, but my neighbor did. His name is uh, Randy Pierce. Okay. And Mr. Pierce wasn't available? Randy wasn't available today? No. Nope. Would he be available some other day? It's just because it's like because you didn't see it happen, okay, and, and Randy, and Randy that, yeah. did, and so I I I, I th if if the I town had before and after pictures, and you can tell the road was clean. I left for work. Mm -hmm. My retaining wall was up. Yep. The street cleaner came by, and I have pictures where you can tell the the street's been cleaned, and then it's it's down. And he yes. said he saw it. So nobody but, told me that I have to have the, that okay. neighbor come in. All right, I'm so, uh, that, and that's fine. We, then we, we can certainly continue this matter. Okay. Um, I've seen I've seen I've seen some of those pictures also, and the picture I saw was that if if this was the retaining wall. I saw sand and gravel here, which suggests to me that the street sweeper went past went past the wall, but didn't get up against it. And so I would, and that's why I'd like Randy to come here to say, did you see the street sweeper hit the wall and knock it over? I'd like to understand what he saw that makes him think that the town is responsible, because to my mind, the pic the pictures show that the street sweeper went by, but I don't quite see the street sweeper hitting the wall. And since he, since he's the witness. I'd, I'd like I his wish I had known that he needed to come in. Okay, I'm. I'm I mean, I'm I, back from April, I sent pictures and called. And the front of my house looks terrible, and I just want it fixed. Okay, I understand. We are meeting next Thursday. Is um. I can ask him. Yeah, could you invite? Okay. I, I have some other questions from when I saw it. And, oh, you, yeah. and you're looking at the pictures. Yeah, and I don't know if we could get answers to this. And I agree, it's unfortunate, and you know, we need to. 
examine this, but my questions are, this being in the right of, as we were just talking about trees and things in the right of way, is this considered in the right of way in the town? And was it permitted when it was built? Because I question if walls can be built this close to the road to begin with. So if it's repaired, is it being repaired next to the road even being appropriate if it's in the town right away? Anyone know? <laughs> I, they were I, there when I bought my house, so right. I, I don't yeah. know. But that doesn't mean it was permitted either. either. Yeah, but if it was there 10 years, mm -hmm. then yeah. so if I, we haven't objected to it after 10 years, then we bought it. Okay. Or, I'm, I'm not saying we no, bought no. it, but yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, from yeah, a yeah. standpoint of whether it's authorized yeah, it's, to be it's, there or not. It's grandfather. It, yeah, it's, it's grandfather. Like and anything, can, whether it's permitted it or not, mm -hmm. is... Yeah, it's, it's it's that question's moot at this point. Yeah. Okay. And so and uh, Christine, just We've and, down as I explained, this, what I'm seeing here, this dirt and debris, it looks like the street sweeper came this close to your wall, but it looks like there's a one or two foot. I can't t quite tell from the scale Buffer. gap between where the street sweeper was and your retaining wall, and that's and so that makes me say I want to talk to the person who told you this so that I can understand. I, I see what you're saying, but. It's not a coincidence that the street sweeper went by and now my thing is on the ground. No, I understand it. The street, the street sweeper is a big piece of equipment and it brushes yeah. and it, it vibrates. And like coming and putting it back, I mean, hammering it in, mm -hmm. whatever. I just I just want it like to look nice and now I have to wait another month. I'm not happy about it. Or another, I don't, I mean, what if he can't come? So, I um, uh, I'll make a motion that if, in, in the event that he can't attend the meeting, that that you can designate somebody to uh, meet with him at his availability. I, I'm good. Would, would that be acceptable to you? Uh, I didn't hear you. Um, she uh, she suggested that if uh, Randy can't make it next Thursday, that the board appoint a single member to meet with him and discuss what sure, he saw, look sure, at the pictures, maybe look at the site, and that way we can get this done quickly. Thank you, Beth. That's a great idea. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Need you. A second to that motion. A second. I'll do it. Okay. So. Uh, so uh so you made that motion i made I second the motion it. we second it so all in favor that we I mean, we have hey, have hey i'm in charge <laughs> all right hey i'm in charge all right you're in charge <laughs> all right Any, uh, all in favor of uh, appointing someone if necessary please say aye all right. aye. aye all right and then do we need to vote to appoint someone or is that something just yeah you can't just autonomously make a choice because you're oh. part of a board all right so, so i make a motion for tom to visit. <laughs> Perfect. <experience. Yeah>. All <laughs> right. Perfect. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I'm sorry, what's the date for that? Um, the, uh, what we'll do is um, if you could, uh, 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 Kelly, you're going to be out next week? That's correct. All right. Uh, let's see. You could just give her your contract. Give her your contract. I, 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 that's, that's just what I'm doing. Let me give you my email address and then you let me know if, if whether Randy can make it next him. Thursday or not. Okay. And if he can't, then you and I will negotiate a time with uh, when he's available and then I can come by and look at it and talk to him and understand and that way we can Perfect. Okay. that way Why the extra and stuff? we'll try and get that done. Yeah, I mean or he could have could have he, he written an email, would that have been I mean we're still gonna go through with this. It's just like no one told me that he had to like come in or do anything. And could you write the time down too? For the meeting, thank you. Sure. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Kelly. Why delay this interaction? Why don't you just meet with him? And then you can deal with it on Thursday rather than waiting till Thursday, finding out he can't be here, and then having it delayed another amount of time. I'm, I'm, I like that idea. Do we need to move separately, or can we do we've that already under designated the existing you, We've already designated yeah. you as the, 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 the board person. delegate. <laughs> uh, this the, this the way, delegate? won't be delayed okay, any longer. All right. we, we have made you the delegate. And the first time I wrote it, my penmanship is still not good. Brookfieldma.us. That's select member two at brookfieldma.us. So gotcha. You, all right. Okay, so 
Um, I'm so, sorry, so did she change it? So you're going to The, 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 have the plan is I will go out and talk to you. I, I will go to your house, talk to you and Randy. We'll look it over. We'll look at the picture. We'll talk about what he saw. And then the board will, and then you base, can still and then invite him to come to the meeting, but if he can't, you've already got it covered. Yeah, and then that way, and then it's like, and then you are, and then the, well, on the agenda for next Thursday, we will, ha we will discuss this matter further. Yep, I've got it and in the notes way, to add to the July 6th That agenda. way the board will have its chance to talk to Randy about what he saw, and uh, we should have enough information to move forward. Of course, you're welcome to come, and, um, if, and it would be helpful if he could come. It's like, but it's not necessary. Um, the meeting time will be, is, scheduled, is, like, is going to be 6.15 next Thursday on the 6th. Okay. And typically the, the board, uh, the normal meeting schedule is first and third Thursday of the month. Okay. And we're just catching up. Okay. And yes, right. I'd just like to repeat that I don't want to brand new anything. I just want to put back hammered, mm -hmm. uh, stapled, whatever construction words are used. Just mm -hmm. put it back. That's it. All right. Thank you. I was going to say, I don't, I'd say I'd bring my duct tape. I don't think it's up to the job. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, I get an emergency uh, point, of, a point of order um, about the issues in town. It's, it's you know, it's one um, because it's it's because of um, what I saw and the pictures I have of, of taxi fuel. It's not on your agenda. Pumping, um, off, pumping with a tanker, then he's pumping off that, and one or two years ago, uh, that that the board turned him down not to do that. And he's doing it anyway. I'm the select board. I don't. I, yeah. The select board turned him down. Do you have a um? Okay. So this would, is not so on the agenda. Yeah. So, okay. so this is don't get sucked so in. So this is so. If the, if the planning board, if he is violating something the planning board told him to do, then this is something for the planning board to bring up. This is not under the authority of the select board, nor is it on the agenda for today's meeting. And then, then please, if, uh, if it is a safety issue, then I recommend you contact the state fire marshal and the state authorities if he's doing something unsafe. That is not, it's like if it is a safety issue, we are not the right people to do that. If you if if your if your concern is that he's violating his permit, then the pl then the planning board issued the special use permit. The planning board should be made aware of it so they can consider revoking it. If it's a safety matter, please contact the state fire marshal or the appropriate authority. I'm suggesting the state fire marshal because I think that's who's appropriate, but I don't. But I'm not sure. But I would start with them. You could even if you're concerned about this type of thing, you could probably just call the fire department. I'm sure Chief Martel would tell you who the right person at the state would be to handle that. Submitted to the police department on it, and this incident and stuff like that. I just smelled the proof myself. I, was, I picked, took pictures of them transferring fuel from, a from three different vehicles. Oh, gosh, and it's. No, the board gave them permit to, for the. The select board, it gave them a permit to store 110,000 gallons of propane on the property. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a public hearing when they had it. They didn't go through the proper procedure. This, excuse me. Now, this is not on the agenda. Yeah. If there is a it's safety, then bring it to the fire marshal. We cannot change that. Our revoking, if we had the power to revoke his permit, that would not change something. Get if you. I am not. I am not doing that. I am not qualified to determine if there is a safety issue there. Please bring it to someone who is qualified to determine there's a safety issue. We brought it to the board of health. We brought it to the, the planning board. We brought it to the zoning board of appeals. Where else do you think that we're supposed to go? The fire marshal. The and state fire, the fire marshal. marshal. And what was the answer? And what did the state fire marshal the fire tell you? We're supposed to go to our board of selectmen and our town committees, and that's for, what we have done. For a, so a, for a to get safety issue? Agenda. Yes. I, we even had OSHA over there. Then call OSHA. They, they would shut, I can't call OSHA. They would shut them down if there was an issue. Okay. And what was the determination? Well, what was the determination? You issued the permit allowing them, the board is elected, you issued the permit allowing them to keep the property on the property at all. This is not on the agenda. This is, this it, this. The select board is not the right vehicle for revoking a permit if there is a safety issue. If there is a safety issue, the state, and the regulatory authority is, is necessary to do that. And in there, and I would contact them. I am not going 
to get this board involved in that because it, I am, I don't think anyone on this board is qualified for that. You have lots of people that aren't qualified that are doing things, but you know, that's here yeah. or there. Hmm? Okay? Thank you. Your office tells someone to issue a building permit with no plans at all. Right. This topic is over. So could you tell me again that you are not going to do anything about it? Mrs. Washburn, you have brought up an issue that is one not on the agenda. You have brought up something you can, sir, can claim is a public safety issue to the administrative head of the town, and I have said this is not something we are going to consider today. You may bring this issue to the fire marshal and any state regulatory agency who I think is much better positioned to deal with this than we are. So you're saying that you will continue to let them have the permit to, to, to store the propane on the property even though it's leaking out of the tankers? If it's leaking, you need to call the fire um, department. If there is a leak, down. excuse me, if there is a leak, then what, what evidence do you have that there is a leak other, other, other than you have said you smell propane. And my understanding from the hearings is that, uh, is that, no, you may not right now. I'm in the middle of talking. You have said you smell propane. And I recall from the planning board hearings that there was talk that there would be some propane tra emission during transfer when they hook and unhook. So until you can show me that there is an active leak and not just say, oh, I smell a little propane, there must be a leak. Until you can show me there's a leak, then I do not think there needs to be an action. You've just come here and said, I smell a little propane, can you please shut them down? That is what I am hearing. And therefore, and if you think there is a leak, call the fire marshal. Call the state regulator of propane storage. They oversee such things, they are responsible for such things. This, the town is not responsible for determining those problems. My name is Tom Regan. I approve this message. <laughs> Can you tell me why? No, I will not. The, this topic Blaise, is over. Why Mr. Blaze has been taken off of the agenda four times from mm. coming to the Board of Selectmen on this matter? I cannot tell you because I was just elected chair and I did not have okay. authority for the agenda Do beforehand. And I am not and I am not discussing this because it was not on the agenda. If Mr. Blaze would like something on the agenda, you may I am happy to talk to you about this and 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 for Excuse me, if Mr. Blaze would like to be on the agenda for a future meeting, I am happy to talk to him about that because I control the future meeting agendas as the chair. I cannot tell, I cannot talk to what was done by the prior chair, and fundamentally, it's less relevant. The point is that if you have a matter you'd like to bring up, please bring it to me, and if I think it's relevant to the board, I will, I will, I will bring it up. I was scheduled to be on this board, on this meeting at the 29th. I, I, I don't. I clerk of court that I was on the agenda, the 29th. The clerk of court. Who is the clerk of court? Mike. Oh, the, the town clerk? Mike is a town clerk. Mike, oh, town clerk? Mike, Mike, Mike does not control the agenda. I, you, you. I was on the agenda. I was on the agenda twice and twice you removed me. I, I did not remove you. I don't, I don't know why. Your town administrator is three times. Okay. I can't talk to what happened in the past. Please stick around and see me, or I will give you my email address and we can and my phone number, and we can discuss this about next are week's you, meeting. Are you in control, or is the, the uh, administrative control of your uh, zoning officer? Zoning officers elected. The, the zoning. No, the no, no, we can, no, we control the. Okay. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. We are not talking about the zoning officer right now. If this matter comes up, it needs to be on the agenda so that people in this. Excuse me. I am not done. If we are going to talk about something, open meeting law requires that it be on the agenda and posted 48 hours in advance so that people who are interested may attend. We are not talking about the zoning enforcement officer because it is not a posted agenda item. Thank you. If you have a concern, you can discuss it with members of the select board directly outside meeting. What do I to make the meeting with so I'm not canceled again? You may, on the agenda after you may, this morning and was canceled this I never, I never saw him on any agenda. I asked, so she's the one that scheduled the meeting for him and told him he was on the agenda. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So the county administrator was telling him that he has a meeting. He was scheduled for June 15th. They called him and canceled that meeting. The meeting, yeah, the meeting June 15th was canceled. The, you can't, he, okay. there's no one to meet with him. He said, well, we'll be on the meeting for June 29th. What's today, June 29th? Yeah. Yes, okay. Did anyone see, Mr. Blaise, did you see your name on the posted agenda of this meeting? No, I didn't look for it. I was, okay. I just then, requested the okay. and I was told it was on for the 29th. I, I, I can't tell you what happened, but you're not on the posted agenda, and by open, I would violate open meeting law if I discussed, if I discussed your matter with you. Who do I approach now to make a meeting that is not canceled? Uh, please see me after the meeting. I have to run this meeting. Okay. And then a after this meeting, or you can uh, contact me, uh, select member two at brookfieldma.us is my, uh, my name. You have my name. And so you can reach out to me that way, and we can talk, ab and we can start talking about it, uh, about what you want to raise, about what you want discussed at meeting. Okay. All right? I, I, I can't control what happened in the past, and you're not on the agenda, and so as I can't deny the rest of the town the opportunity to come out and talk about this topic. We can't talk about it behind the town's back. So if and I approach you, you're going to set up a meeting for us to talk? I will, I, you can bring your concern to me. I will not promise that you will be on the agenda. I will. <laughs> Wait, you haven't told me what you want to talk about, so I can't I promise you you'll be on the agenda. Against your zoning officer who is not doing his job on my behalf. All right. Then, well, then, then we, then I will talk to you about it at some point, and if there is a matter that the board needs to attend to, I'll bring it up. But I am not, I am not promising you a hearing before the board just because you say you have a beef with the zoning enforcement officer. All right, I am going to qualify your concern, and if you don't like it, I am up for election next May. The election doesn't help my wife, who was, who, who was having some COD problems because of all of the fuel being transferred and all of the exhaust being run for hours and hours and hours. The board of hell has, has been okay. notified several times, but unfortunately, okay. the regulator right. what they can do because the zoning officer what? will not do his job. All right. Well, I I can't help you at this meeting. Okay. Then set up an appointment. Let's 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 talk. Okay. Set it up. What time? Anytime. I'm, I'm retired. I'm retired. Anytime you want. Any day. All right. I'm available. But I don't have your contact information. Call. Send. You want my phone number? You can call me. Give me, make, me, make give me your phone me. number. We'll say, I will say, I'll call you tomorrow to set something up. I would think. Do you have it? Okay. Hold on. No. Is it? Is it? Oh, 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 hold on. All right. 508-867-6124. And is it Roland or Ronald? Roland. Roland, thank you. Roland Blaise. Blaise. B L A I S. Okay. Would you like it? Would you like some heads up? I have some heads up for you. Um, I won't say no, but I'm not going to read it until later. This is this, this is my grievance to, to you, okay. asking you to confront your your zoning officer okay. and get the job done. All right. Thank you. And you're going to call me up when? I will call you tomorrow. Work is work. Work is busy. Uh, let's see. Give me a time schedule because I'm tired. No, I, I know, I know. It's like, <laughs> I know. Do you get up early or do you stay up late? I'm up early. I'm up at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm God, at 5 God. I'm at 7 o'clock. All right, that's, that's fine. I, I, will give you, I will give you a call between 8 and 9 o'clock. In the morning. In, yes, in the morning. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not going to try to catch you when you're already asleep. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be expecting your phone call. All right. All right, agenda item number eight. Sign VADAR contract. No, number nine. Sign nine? Contract. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, 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 thank you. I'm, I, I got folded down. Number nine, I had the right item. But yes, nine, sign the VADAR contract. This is the contract for all of the software for the finance department. <laughs> Kelly, is it the same contract as last year? I, I mean, see last year, so I can't okay. answer that question, but their, their okay. services that they're providing are the same as we have now. All right, let's see. Is it a three-year contract? Or I'm just I'm just wondering I'm just wondering I'm just wondering why the um how, what is the term of the what was the term of the last contract that just expired? Three years. Three okay, that's that's why it's not on your radar. I thought it was an annual contract, that's why I thought you would have seen it. 
So same services, more price. Roughly, yeah. Yes, okay. Just because they were, I'm sure their rates went up a little and we're probably asking for a little more than we did in the past. No, yeah. Oh, no, we're, we're, 24 is going to be the same services as we, we added something in 23, right? You, didn't we add a, a seat invader? We, we added, no, we didn't. Okay. No, we didn't. All right. We had a certain number of access points. One was dropped, and then it was added back in. So it's basically the same. Okay. No net change. And where does it say the amount? Oh, there we go. All right. This, that number looks. That number is uh, looks to be the number that was in our budget discussions. When okay. you put the yep. Could I get a motion so to uh, approve the contract and then we can have any discussion? So okay. moved. Second. All right. Any discussion on the VADAR contract? No. Nope. <laughs> All right. All in favor of signing the VADAR contract, please say aye. 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 And is, Kelly, is that something that I should sign or there's only one signature line? Mm -hmm. Or is that something you can sign? Well, if you ask me to, like, yeah. Kelly, would you sign it, please? Sure. All right. Do you have your own copy, or? Um, I have an unnumbered agenda item, agreement Lester Health Services. No. No? Okay. That's no. still part of this. We have to do the police. Oh, oh, that's, that's the, oh, that's, that's part of the contracts we need to sign. Extension of the agreement with Lester Health Okay. And I think these I are these all in different. Um, I don't have that in front. Of I, as I say, I, I don't. I don't have those contracts in my packet. You don't have the blue tree contract. No, the only other in the in the packet for contract signing, I have the tree contract, okay. and that's it. I have two copies of the tree contract. No, I don't see it. I have all the correspondence. Say the change. Probably yeah, not. the change that he wanted was he didn't want it to say subject to town meeting vote. He wanted it to say subject to appropriations, which is basically the, the same, same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's. Uh, I it's, don't see an issue with the change. So it, the change was made. It's a functionality neutral language yes. change. Yes. Okay. It is. So if you would like to approve that, the office of that. You you sent us a copy. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. That's I thought I saw. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought I saw. In yeah, here. I saw the online copy. Actually, I had it up a little while ago. So, if you want to make a motion to approve it and then discuss it, or however you want to do this. I'll make a motion that we approve it as uh, previously, or with the um, with the amended uh, verbiage relative to the uh, um, appropriations. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? I think we've been over this enough. Yeah. All right. All in favor of approving the police chief's contract as amended, say aye. 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 Okay, 
Okay, so there's an intermunicipal agreement with Leicester. Um, it was, I was brought a sheet from a representative of Leicester asking that they get an extension and they asked for the board to sign for an extension. This is, this is the one that provides the health services and all of the other uh, things that are outsourced for community health for different functions the board of health does. I see we've got board of health here. Is there any input? Required. Looks like they've already approved it. I mean, is it just taking the existing agreement and extending the term? Yes. Okay. And is there any cost to the town? No. All right. You have a motion to approve the, uh, the so extension the for uh, the uh, agreement with the. Uh, what is that? Let me just get the full title on that. So. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the extension for the. Uh, um, current intermunicipality agreement with Lester um, in support of the uh, continuation of this grant program. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Seeing as there's none, all in favor say aye. 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 Do we not sign this? No, you did not. No. Did Tom sign? No. No, there's no. no. Sign. Yeah, just sign. He signs right below, Maureen. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right, were those, Kelly, were those the three contracts we needed signed? Or is there a fourth one in there? There, there was a fourth one, but it didn't hit the agenda because I didn't hear from Mr. Rust until today. Okay. But it was put in the folder because I thought I was putting the police chief's one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that brings us to uh, agenda item 10, resignation veterans agent. So you have his resignation. He's given us plenty of notice. We share services with, our veterans agent covers the territory of Brookfield, West Brookfield, and Warren. Um, I met with the town administrator of Warren and West Brookfield so that we're coordinating our efforts on hiring uh, a new veterans agent for the three towns. Excuse me. Um, Mr. Lapine, recommended somebody, that person is not interested in the job. Oh, um, really? Warren has very, uh, we, we did get another recommendation, and she's extremely qualified, but we have posting requirements, so the, the job needs to be, needs to be posted. And Warren has very stringent posting requirements, so we're going to try and work around that. What we would like to do is have the three town administrators um, and Warren has a veteran board, a representative from their board, to post it. Jointly? Yeah. It's like going, a regional? We're going to post it jointly, listing each stipend for each town and what, what, how many current recipients we have for each town. Um, the applications are going to go to the West Brookfield town administrator then we're all going to review them in individual West Brookfield has the authority the town administrator has the authority to hire so he's going to make his decision jointly with us and we're going to bring our recommendation I'm going to bring the recommendation to this board and um, the one town administrator is going to bring it to his board so if you are agreeable to that that is how we will handle the replacement of the veterans in town Makes sense. All right. So you have concern. Oh. So yeah. I guess first of all, a motion to ex I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of uh, uh, Mr. Lapine with uh, you know our regrets mm -hmm. um, and 
support the current town administrator plan for um, appropriate posting and coordination of uh, a new candidate. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, he certainly did give us plenty of notice. Yeah. So. All right, agenda item 11, police station building insulation. That one's fun. Yes. So, um, not if it's on, if it's not on the agenda, I'd rather you not. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, what, when will you be back? All right, I will call you between 9 and 10. Nine and ten is good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Who seconded the motion for the veterans thing? Uh, Brad did. Thank you. Okay, Bob, I have two selectmen in front of me who are aware of this issue. If you'd like to address mm -hmm. that, or would you like me to sure. explain? I can. Uh, Brad, have you seen it? Yeah. Uh, so why don't you go? Because I sure. only heard it described. So the chief in his office had noticed the drop ceiling was sagging. And when he went to go investigate it, he noticed that the insulation was coming down onto the drop ceiling. He, I don't know what the actual timeline of events were, but he did talk to an insulation company who noticed some issues with the way the insulation was installed. I've dealt with insulation and uh, the issue is is it's loose blown cellulose stapled in with plastic holding it up and the problem you get over time is those staples start to give way which is occurring and the insulation is coming down and is it an open truss ceiling yes so it's, it's wide open all the way up so not individual do you know if the grading is done per, by the room? Because there needs to be grading up there to hold the drop ceiling. There, it, I did not see any grading, which was my concern. What's holding the drop ceiling? Plastic and staples. No, no, no. No, that's 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 a, no there's grading. Oh. Uh, that uh, grate that, yeah. that uh, drops. Yeah, uh, that's there. Yeah. What is, what is that attached to? Those are, wi those are wired up to the rafters. To yeah. the rafters? I mean, I would assume that's how it is. That's how you do it. <laughs> so all that ceiling system is, and over time, loose bone cellulose collects moisture, it gets heavy. So we got a problem. <laughs> And then in the department meeting today, the uh, chief said that the, um, the insulation has been removed from over his office and the booking area, which um, means that in the winter, there'll be a lot of heat going up to the roof and causing melting up there. And so the rooms will be cold and the roof will be melting and ice damp. Ice damp. Small causes condensation inside of the attic, which will Ooh. in turn make the, the, yeah. the insulation heavier. Yep which will in turn decrease the insulation value, which will in turn cause mold problems and the entire ceiling will come down. And ice it dance. doesn't happen. <laughs> yes. it. Mm -hmm. So something that needs to be taken care of uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, is this too many years yes, past it building? Is already it? Yeah, it's, okay. I uh, believe the building's 10 years old. Yeah, you, you called the builder, didn't you? So we can't do it. I did not. Oh, the oh chief, chief did. did. So okay. we can't do anything at this point. Oh. With the yeah, no, not, there's no warranty on this. This just needs to be fixed. Well, I, mean, I it, know there's no warranty. Yeah, but. Um, they actually meet the specifications. Right, that's what I'd be interested in. You need to talk to your building inspector about because that should have been inspected. I would be interested in seeing that from the building inspector and how it was signed off and if it was deemed appropriate at that time. Going backwards isn't going to fix this. If no, I know. Your finger is not well, going to fix it, so. He tell you that it was inspected when he was on the building committee. Um, when they built that building, it was inspected by the building inspector, and they go just by spec when they built it. Okay, so, so that's probably code back in back. Well, that's why I said it, it yeah, could have been code back then. Right. It was back then, but it was and it was inspected by the building inspector, and it couldn't be passed. Goodness, that's excellent information. 
So it sounds like we have no grounds there. So we're going to have to just. So what are it, what are it. what are our options? Like what funding sources do we have? Are I believe we have that we, we funded one of the was what was going to be an ARPA article with a town free cash article. So we have a little bit of ARPA money left. Okay. So I need to look at that with um, the town council and see what we have left and what we have here left. Okay. So there may be funding there. In the meantime, do we? We should probably start looking into what it's going to take to repair that in parallel with looking at how we're going to fund the, fund the repairs. And, and and at some point, we're going to have a special town meeting towards the end of the year. Could you then, at that it, special that, town meeting, have a too late. On, it's too early to know. No, but I mean, if you did, could you then add that as a warrant for that special? We could. Meeting? We have free cash left over. Yeah. yeah. So we can, oh no, we won't be able to use free cash after tomorrow. Right. We have to wait for the thing recertified. So if it's recertified by then, yeah. we can use free cash for it. So what do we need is, do we need a motion to? We need to get this fixed before it gets Before started. winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, uh, so functionally, what do we need? A motion to um, at least to obtain a quote relative to the insulation repairs? Yeah. I'd say we need, need to authorize investigation and quote gaining, getting quotes for our so options who, for fixing this. Typically, who's responsibility would it be to, to go out and do this fundamentally? Well, under, under the... We don't have a building committee or anything. Under the statute, the police chief is under complete control of his own building. Okay. I don't know if he would have a suggestion as to how we would like to proceed with this, but it is his building, so he is the one responsible for this. Not, not the damage, of course, but he no. has yeah. the authority he, yeah. to get this fixed. This yeah, he's, he's responsible for dealing with it. Sorry, this is out of your authority because it's a police station. Once he occupies it, he has complete control over the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the library okay. trustees have complete control over the library. Right. Yeah. Is this something that we could, um, is there anyone, I'm sure we could ask if he would like some help? Together. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we we you could ask the town hall improvement committee if they have a resource? That's that's I was thinking. Well, I was wondering if they were the right one to tap. Going. Also, yeah. Yeah, in, in order to provide them some support with some folks that have experience in getting these type of contractors on board, mm -hmm. connections in the community. So, um, so what do you want um, in terms of a motion? I would say that we. I'm thinking we want to authorize the chief to investigate um, options and uh, and get estimates for what it will, what he thinks needs to be done to deal with this, and that we ask the town hall improvement committee to uh, nominate one or two people to um, assist the chief as needed in evaluating the situation and uh, identifying paths forward. Does that sound good? Okay, or did so, I miss something? Uh, um, let me just try to make that fewer words. So. Um, can we get a, um, so I'll, I make a motion that um, that we provide support to the police chief uh, and give him the go ahead to um, uh, explore his re building repair options for this insulation mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with a request to the um, town hall improvement committee to support him as needed with their skill set. So moved, or second. All right. All right, any further discussion? All right, seeing as none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, agenda item number 12, end of year transfers. And we have two transfers. No, no, you have four. We have four. Oh, we have, we have. Which ones do you have? Yeah, I have, have um, accountant expense to audit and treasurer clerk wages to a couple different ones. Okay, wait a minute. We have. I think I have one signed by Lori and one. Can't read the signature. I've got treasurer. Oh, I think it's Amy. Expense for. 
I don't have one with treasurer expense. Hold on a second. Increase funding. This one's for highway. Uh, this is from the PD, and this is for the water department. You don't I, have any of these? I don't have any of those. Your add-ins to your plan. All right. That's, I have this one. I have the one treasurer clerk wages to, um, going over a couple others. The other is um, new. Okay. Pop that extra one on the floor. Thank you. <laughs> Just so uh, it doesn't get. And now we don't have to worry about it getting. Mixed in? Mixed in. All right, the uh, first transfer is from the account and expense account to the audit account, $1,000, um, due to increase in price um, after budget for, um, after the, the budget was approved last year. So, well, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a motion to, uh, to approve, approve this. So moved. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just read them all? Or? Yeah, just read them all. Okay, okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, number two is uh, I have uh, three transfers, all from treasurer clerk wages. One to tax title, $2,000. One to expenses, I believe that's, tre yeah, that's treasurer expenses for $250. And one to payroll services for $250. Um, reason, auction costs, postage increases, and more paychecks. The uh, third transfer is from both, uh, there are two transfers on this form. Both are from the Water Department expense account. One is to the Water Department clerk wages account for $5.12. And the second one is to the Water Department second, secondary operator wages account for $660.38. The uh, fourth transfer, um, both are from police wages full-time. Uh, one goes to police wages full-time overtime. That's $36,500. And the other one is to police department clerk, $1. Uh, fifth and final transfer is from, Kelly, it just says from expense, to utilities. Tell me what the account number is. Uh, it's 011422. Highway department. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's talk to Ryan about getting the department. He know he knows it's his department. We don't. I say all right. And the uh, reason is the increased cost of natural gas. That's yeah. That's not a surprise. Okay. So those are the five transfers. Are there any? Uh, so let's get let's get these uh, motioned for discussion, and then we can figure them out. Uh, give me a motion to uh, discuss the uh, end of year transfers. Okay. Well, aren't they all end of year transfers? You asked for that motion. You asked yeah. for okay. it. Yep. I gave right. you the motion you Thank asked you. for. Thank you. I just, I, I, end of year threw me off. Okay. Brad? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion about these? Nope. No, I yep. mean, it's, it's pretty standard practice. I mean, yep. it looks like we're just doing the typical end-of-year transfers. Yeah, that's, I agree. None of them stand out as being significant under or over budget fundamentally. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, seeing as there's no further discussion, um, all in favor of approving all transfers, say aye. 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 Beth, did you? Aye. Okay, thank you. All right. We already did Officer Panera um, with the with the other appointments but to full time officers. I don't know why this is not going to be Oh, yeah, that's true. We already did that. Probably because it came in as correspondence. All right, so all right, I'll sign these before the end of the meeting. Uh, let's see, appointment. All right, uh, Mr. Panero has been appointed, and did we did we appoint um, uh, no, Candace? No, she wasn't. She wasn't on. Candace was not on the list because she was recently um, asked. Monday. Monday. Yeah. So this was added to the agenda. Oh, okay. Um, All right, and the uh, the, uh, the this is the Conservation Commission um, recommending that we the, appoint her. Uh, yes, is the Conservation recommended that that she be appointed, and now their board is full. We have a seven-member board. Good standing. 
All right, I'll take a motion. Motion to uh, appoint Candace Bombard, is it for a period of three years? Okay. Second. Oh no, we do you yearly. Concom is, is Concoms year. yearly? Okay, so uh, through uh, June 30th, uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right, so Kelly, I've got, there's just an agenda on fiscal year 24 appointments. Outside the you just did those. Okay. But I those were numbers so that Brad could sign them? Oh, that's, that's right, that's right. There we go. That's my, my bad. All right, select board minutes. These are all emailed to, I believe. Yes, I thought, yep. I, I, thought I saw a physical copy, um, but. Motion to approve uh, the minutes for 5, 12, 6, 1, and 6, 6 uh, as previously uh, provided electronically. Second. All right. And uh, Kelly, the, um, the 6, 6, 23 is, has an executive session set of minutes. The other two don't. You have them in your folder. I do. Okay. They are, they're, they're, I knew they're I saw them. They're in a different color. Oh, there we go. The, the green, the green one. I knew I saw them. Thank you. May 12, June 1, June 6, June 6. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Answer my question. Um, I have my motion and second, right? All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. We uh, acknowledge the monthly police report. All right. Uh, Would you mind passing that around? No, uh, not at all. It's. It didn't. It wasn't in the packet. I didn't see a copy. I looked for it earlier. I didn't see mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Looks like he's got a list of um, call outs or calls he had to respond to. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, there's something specific I'm looking for on there. Okay. That's all. Dispatch. Is there a way that we could request that this, because I know there's a, uh, this is an analysis by call reasons. Can we find out if what other, um, what, what other formats this can be provided in? The one I'm specifically interested in is call out by like time of day. They have that. Does it like give them what's called? It doesn't. No. I didn't think it did. It's by type rather than um, by timing or day. Is there someone that we can talk to in regards to that? Like the reports? Like from dispatch? Or I could talk to the well, chief yeah. offline. Well, that's, talk to the chief because I think they can run I think yeah. they can run this report by a whole like their standard software, they can run it by a whole bunch of different things. Because there'd be some things. interesting things I'd like to see. Yeah, exactly. So if, if uh, we make a motion to just request, I'd like to request that and see what, what options we have from the Braintree dispatch for the format on that. Mm-hmm. You want to second it? So second. Thank you. All right. All in favor for uh, placing that request to the Braintree dispatch? Aye. 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 All right. the chief. Mm-hmm. You All right. Try to do it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, you didn't mm -hmm. say to no, you because no, because there's other things I want to say. All right, and then do we need a motion to acknowledge the report? Yeah. All right. Just review it. All right. That brings us to the last item on the agenda: executive session under exemption number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If any open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, um, I do so declare. So, could I get a motion to go? We have a motion to uh, enter executive session under exemption three, um, and not. And to um, to adjourn out of the executive session. And to adjourn the meeting directly out of the executive, executive session, session without open meeting, meeting afterwards. Correct. Okay. Second. Coughlin, I. Uh, oh. yeah, uh, this is a roll call vote. Coughlin, I. Kudelski, I. Regan, I. That's it. 
That's right. Can you do a point of order before you adjourn? Can you do something with your kitchen sink? You got the hot and the cold and the cold and the hot. I mean, how long is that going to be? Mm -hmm. Does anybody even know these things? Talk to you. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had maintenance guys, that's how we fix them. I mean, I know our top is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. We'll see. I hope they're at least clearly coded red and blue, so that when someone reaches the right hand, they notice it. They can at least notice it's red and slow down. Thing for new brain tree. What? Police. The dispatch report. Yeah. Well, but, if, yeah, but, if, but if it's but if it's hot from the last person, there's there's a risk. I know. Just just do what I do because my kids would always run the hot.